You must have seen it by this point. I'm talking about the SpaceX Starship SN8 test flight and the fiery ending. But I've seen a bunch of comments floating around about what went right and what went wrong, and I don't necessarily agree with what some of y'all are saying. So we're gonna talk about that today. Let's go. go for Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon, and welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday. Oh, which, uh, oh. What? 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 You know this is a Two Minute Tuesday? Yeah, that's what we normally do. We do two minutes, and there's no way you know, it's not like, this oh. is two minutes. But you got two pages oh, here. Oh, right. Two pages worth of okay. stuff. There's no way this is two minutes. Well, yeah, but it's it's not really meant to be like you two do, minutes. You like, do this every you know, week. I tell them two minutes, and then. They all know it's not really supposed to be two. You, you do this every week. You lie to them. You tell mm -hmm. them it's two minutes. It's not two minutes. They know it's not two minutes. Why did you, we just do it it's as a regular a thing, video? It's, a, it's the funny part. Oh, all right. Why don't you just, why don't you just start, okay? Just, just start. All right. Okay, well, guess we just start. If somehow you missed it, on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020, SpaceX launched their Starship prototype rocket, dubbed SN8, on its first real test flight to an altitude of 12 and a half kilometers. It went up, it came down, it tried to land, but it exploded in a million pieces. So let's get this out of the way right at the beginning. Was this a failure? Absolutely not. This is the first time that anybody has tried to launch a rocket, belly flop it back to Earth, and then land it. And surprisingly, it all worked really well. And I'm sure there are teams of people at SpaceX that have huge smiles on their faces at how well it worked and how much data they were able to collect. Now, the launch itself had three attempts. The first came on Tuesday and was scrubbed at 1.3 seconds due to some unspecified problem with the Raptor engine ignition process. Oh my goodness, we're 15 seconds away. Oh, oh no! We got a hold. Oh, no, we don't have a hold. Three, two, one. Raptor abort. Oh, Raptor abort. But they were able to try two more times the next day on Wednesday the 9th. On the next try, the count was held at two minutes and six seconds. Hold, hold, hold on countdown. But we don't know exactly why. There are some rumors flying around that a Cessna plane Maybe this Cessna might have violated the TFR or temporary flight restriction, but I have not been able to independently verify that. In fact, I mapped out the TFR and the recorded flight path, and the closest the Cessna got to the TFR was about seven and a half miles away. The red line is also a Delta Airlines flight that some people speculated about too, but that's even further away, so I'm not so sure about this idea, but regardless, they tried for a third time. This was the successful one. Three, two, one, zero. We have lift off. After launch, I was very surprised by the speed at which it ascended which was way slower than I expected. I was anticipating a flight time of around four minutes or so, and I expected to see it ascend quickly, kill the engines, and coast to Apogee, or its peak. But boy, was I wrong. It actually went for six minutes and 42 seconds and remained under powered flight all the way to Apogee. In retrospect, this makes a ton of sense. They have a lot more control over the vehicle under powered flight than they would just coasting because they can continue using thrust vector control with the Raptor engines. But in order to do that, they had to shut down some of the engines during ascent to start slowing down. The Raptors can only throttle down so much, so completely shutting them off one by one is the next best option. And that's exactly what we saw, with the first engine cutting off around 1 minute and 42 seconds into flight, and then the second at 3 minutes and 42 14 seconds. Now, a few people were concerned about this extra flaminess that we saw at engine shutdown, but this is normal. It's just trapped gases that are around after the engine shuts down. Now, it does appear that some of the insulation in the skirt area actually caught fire, but all the components inside the skirt, like wires and stuff, have their own heat protection, so this 
isn't really a big deal. The Starship was able to continue flying perfectly all the way to Apogee and then perform possibly the craziest thing I have ever seen. A rocket the size of a 15-story building belly flopping back to Earth, and honestly, this looked picture perfect. The flaps were able to keep the vehicle rock steady as it descended back to the landing pad, just as gracefully as a skydiver. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh, oh, oh. Is this the flip? <gasps> it's flipping. Something's happening. Oh my god. As it approached the landing pad, the vehicle reignited two Raptor engines to perform this crazy flip maneuver back to the vertical position. Now, using only two of the three Raptor engines was actually what I expected ahead of time, so the fact that the third did not ignite isn't that concerning to me. Just after the flip maneuver, though, one of the Raptor engines went out. At first, I thought this was a problem, but it actually seems intentional to me, so I think it might have been on purpose, and it almost stuck the landing with just one engine, but obviously instead it went out in a blaze of glory. And this is really the only big thing that went wrong. According to Elon Musk on Twitter, the vehicle suffered from low pressure in its fuel header tank and was unable to generate the expected amount of thrust to slow the vehicle down. Now, whether or not that was supposed to be with one engine or with two engines, I'm still not really sure, so we'll have to wait until the next Starship flies to get the definitive answer. One thing is for sure, and that is that the one remaining engine was not performing nominally due to the low fuel pressure. We can see that in the green colored exhaust flame that was generated at landing. This is what most people would call an engine rich exhaust, which essentially means that the engine was burning too hot from the lack of methane and it was actually burning the engine components, resulting in the unusual green flame. Now those header tanks inside of the Starship are basically separate smaller fuel tanks that are used just for landing. And the reason for this is to make managing the landing propellant easier. During the belly flop maneuver, the propellant in the mostly empty main tanks could slosh around and become harder to manage and pump fuel into the engines during that landing flip. This is much easier to handle with smaller and completely full header tanks with just the right amount of fuel needed for landing. However, in this case, the fuel header tank suffered from low pressure, and we all know how that ended. According to the post-flight calculations done by Declan over at flightclub.io, his analysis indicates that the Starship reached a terminal descent velocity of somewhere around 80 meters per second, and it ended up impacting the ground at around 36 meters per second, which is just a wee bit faster than they were hoping for. Now from here, the plan is, or was, to move on to serial number nine. However, that just recently suffered from an unfortunate issue in the assembly bay where it tipped over and resulted in some minor damage. At this point, I'm not sure if they'll fix it or end up scrapping it. The damage does seem relatively minor, but it'll at least result in some sort of delay before the next Starship flies. So in the end, Starship was able to complete 95% of its test objectives and was a big success. It's a huge head start going into the next test flight. And for anyone that's still doubting it, just keep in mind that sometimes perfection is not the best measure for success. That's gonna do it for me. Be sure to click the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. I'm still around. Maybe like ten, we'll do 10 minute Tuesday. We'll put 10 minutes on the clock.